Hi dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends of Cricket Happenings. This is your host Ram giving you all a warm hello uh, on 2nd December 2010. Well, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to present a small cricket package which is going to include uh, the second day's play in the match between West Indies and Sri Lanka which is played at the Palakele International Stadium. Again, rain coming and hitting them and then we have tomorrow Australia and England clashing in the second test of the Ashes series at the Adelaide Oval and the third one will be Afghanistan and Scotland actually playing in the Intercontinental Cup final in the United Arab Emirates where Hamid Hassan put up a great show with a with a five with a five wicket burst and but Neil McCallum um, actually had support from Smith and both of them added 107. They were reduced to 98 for 7 by Hamid Hassan but they recovered to 212 all out thanks to 104 scored by Neil McCallum. And uh, the other thing is Zahir Khan is back into the Indian squad for the One Day Internationals. Suresh Raina has been rested. Pravin Kumar, uh, Rohit Sharma. Pravin Kumar is back after his fever and uh, there are also lookups for uh, Rohit Sharma who is now playing for Mumbai in the Ranji Trophy and also Parthiv Patel who is also playing for Gujarat. Actually Bombay and Gujarat are clashing now in the Ranji Trophy. Well, so and also we are looking at Bangladesh. As you know Bangladesh were upset by Zimbabwe in the first one day international. Tomorrow is the second one day international at Dhaka between Bangladesh and Zimbabwe and we are looking uh, at doing a preview. So what I'm going to do is a, it's, a, it's a quite a cricket package today. So basically I'm combining everything into one but basically sharing the important information from all these uh, places. Well, the first thing that we go now is go to Palakele International Stadium in Sri Lanka where the second day uh, has ended and in the second day uh, West Indies once again um, actually they, they are 244 for 5 which stumps, uh, but, uh, the against Sri Lanka but uh, the thing is again rain has come and hit them. Well, uh, they started off, Darren Bravo started off uh, with that uh, usual fashion actually he again started hitting some boundaries but Fernando nailed him there he was wrapped on the pads LBW ball Fernando for 68 of with 10 force so, uh, 10 delightfully struck force from Dan Bravo after that it was uh, Chandra Paul and uh, Brendan Nash in the middle Brendan Nash was the one who was a bit aggressive Chandra Paul was uh, playing percentage strokes and finally Chandra Paul uh, was also gone Chandra Paul contributed 54 uh, in fact, yeah, Chandra Paul contributed 54 with three fours, and Brendan Nash was not out on 62 at stumps with five boundaries. Uh, Dwayne Bravo, the brother of Darren Bravo, was a victim of Rangana Herat for a duck when he was stumpy when he came out of the crease, and Prasanna Jaiver then he whipped off the bails. 244 for five. Carlton Bog was not out on not. 244 for five was the final score for West Indies on the second day of the third Test match of the, of the Yarai Cup. Lakmal was very impressive. Bailey has spoken very highly of him, the coach of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, uh, Suranga Lakman 16 overs, 5 maidens, 1 for 35 uh, and Angel Matthews 10 overs, well, there's not much to really talk about the bowling figures here. Ajanta Mendes had 2 wickets and we now go for the preview of the Australia-England match uh, that is the second test match of the Ashes series uh, which is tomorrow starting at the, uh, at the Adelaide Oval Cricket Ground. Well, one thing we know for sure that England, uh, England put up a gallant show there uh, of uh, making 517 for 1 declared with uh, centuries for Strauss, a uh, double century for Alistair Cook and a century for Jonathan Trott. So uh, that could give them ounces of confidence going into the second test. Uh, the Adelaide Oval, well, uh, the pitch is definitely full of runs. Uh, it's very good temperature, 30 degrees tomorrow when the match starts, 35 degrees on Saturday. That is uh, good news. And uh, w what's going to be uh, is Adelaide is going to be lots of runs because the boundaries are going to be small. Uh, and uh, I'm told there could be some unpredictable bounce later on. Uh, in the as the as the day progresses that is uh, coming to the end of the match I would say well that is what the curator says there so let's uh, look at Australia well Australia uh, Michael Clark is the one who has to really run into some form I definitely know that Simon Carriage, Shane Watson, Ricky Ponting had some good hits there uh, Michael Clark is the one who has to run into some good form Michael Hussey well he has already run into form Marcus North has to keep up his consistency uh, Peter Siddle bowled extremely well the other day. Uh, ben Hilfen also well. The only notable omission here is uh, Ben jo um, uh, uh, Mitchell Johnson, uh, who has been uh, removed from the squad uh, for his uh, poor bowling. But well, uh, I thought uh, he might have been hard done by. Uh, in fact, uh, that is what the team. So Dougie Bollinger comes in place of Mitchell Johnson. And as far as England is con England are concerned, well, England have everything going their way. 
Andrew Stoss, Alistair Cook uh, and Jonathan Trott at the top of the order uh, taking a piece of cake there and then uh, Kevin Peterson well you know what a world-class player Kevin Peterson is and then you have Paul Collingwood, Ian Bell who did well in the uh, first innings for England in the, fir in the first test uh, Matt Pry, the wicket keeper, uh, who didn't have uh, a good game, and then uh, the bowler Stuart Broad probably would like to bowl well there because uh, I, I I thought James Anderson and uh, Stephen Finn. Stephen Finn did a great job getting a five wicket all, and he was extracting uh, lots of bounce there. Graham Swan could uh, put up a better performance. So that's what, as far as the preview of the second test of the Ashes series is concerned, and uh, uh, there's not much that I can share, dear cricket fans, and we. Uh, go on to the match between Afghanistan and Scotland, which was played. It's the, it's the, it was played at the Dubai International Cricket Stadium. This is the ICC Intercontinental Cup final, which is being contested between Scotland and Afghanistan. And Afghanistan actually had Scotland on the ropes at 98 for weight, with Hamid Hassan returning figures of 5 for 45 with 10 maidens and 26.4 overs, 10 maidens, 45 runs, and 5 wickets. Splendid bowling analysis for him. There were every uh, only there were contributions. Barrington made uh, 29, and then from 98 for seven. Actually, that was a beautiful partnership uh, which ensued between uh, Neil McCallum, who was not out on 104 uh, with 17 boundaries, and uh, uh, Smith gave him company, making 36 of 115 balls with four fours. 212 all out uh, Scotland, uh, thanks to Hamid Hassan's uh, fiery balling. 26.4 overs, 10 made in 545, and in fact Afghanistan at the end of the day. Uh, were 18 for 1 with uh, the person dismissed was Shabi Inui was bowled by Parker for 11. Karim Sadiq was not out on 2 and Mirvaz Rashraf was not out on 5. So Afghanistan did a great job there bowling out Scotland for 212 in the Intercontinent, ICC Intercontinental Cup final on the first day. And well it is a 4 day match so it was the first day and well uh, that was a good stand there. Neil McCallum and uh, uh, Smith combining to put a wonderful stand from 98 for 7 from 97 for 8 rather, they took the score on to 204. So that's the news that as far as from the United Arab Emirates is concerned. Now we cast an eye uh, on the on the second on the second one day international uh, which is going to be starting uh, between Bangladesh and Zimbabwe at Dhaka. And as you know Zimbabwe created a huge upset in the first uh, one day international uh, by actually uh, uh, beating Bangladesh by 9 runs. But what, what, what's Bangladesh going to do? So that is the question now. I'm told the pitch is going to be slow and it's going to turn and that is another good thing for Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe's spinners are the ones who are always ruling the roost and as I've already mentioned here, uh, Raymond Price makes a big, big difference and so Raymond Price, Prospero Tsaya, Keith Dabengwa, uh, we couldn't do much but uh, Raymond Prospero Tsaya, I was uh, surprised that uh, Creamer was uh, not there in the team and I was also surprised that uh, Hamilton Masakadza, uh, who has been scoring very heavily uh, as far as Zimbabwe is concerned, doesn't find a place in the team. And in fact, Regis Chakabwa actually took up his place, but Regis Chakabwa has played uh, marvelously well, so he definitely would retain his place. And uh, Elton Chigumbra, I'm told uh, he has just got 150 in the whole year and he is the captain of the Zimbabwe team. Probably needs to do better than that uh, to really prove himself. Uh, and uh, well, I can also say Chris Pofu bowled well, uh, taking four wickets for 25, uh, three wickets for 25, becoming the man of the match there. And as far as Bangladesh is concerned, what are they going to do? Well, for Bangladesh is the one question. Mohamed Ashraful needs to fire. Now, this is not happening at all. And Mohamed Ashraful has become a weak link in the Bangladesh team now because he's not really, um, uh, really getting on. He is not playing. He is not uh, getting on to a big knock. And that is the, um, uh, it's, it's a big question mark now as, as far as Mohamed Ashraful is concerned. And that to a team like Zimbabwe. Uh, well, the other players definitely played well. Tamim Iqbal, Imrul Kays, Junaid Siddiq. Uh, Mushfiqur Rahim probably failed there. Shakib Alassan, well, he has been doing his job. He's the captain of the team too. Uh, and Mahmoud Allah bowled well, but Mashraf and Murtaza has to bowl well. He was all over the place. Abdul Razak. So, it is, uh, in my opinion, uh, the pitch is going to be slow. The pitch is going to turn. So, uh, we can expect that it's a battle between the spinners. Uh, the Bangladeshi spinners and the Zimbabwean spinners. How things pan out. As you know, uh, even the Bangladeshi spinners, uh, Abdul Razak uh, did a good job there. <laughs> And uh, also, um, I mean, uh, that is what it is. So basically, uh, Bangladesh is the one who actually uh, have to shrug off that humiliation that they suffered at the Shere Bangladesh National Stadium in Mirpur and actually turn it on in Dhaka. Whether they are going to do it, that remains to be seen. But well, dear cricket fans, today was a real package that I gave you, a cricket package uh, which, gave you, uh, which gave you all the information. I hope, dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends, you all like this uh, total cricket package 
uh, which was presented by your host Ram of Cricket Happenings. Uh, I mean, it all depends on the time. If I have time, I go the whole hog. Uh, but also, I have to look after some of the commitments. As I said, uh, this is just my passion. And well, dear cricket fans, it was a pleasure bringing it to you. And I hope you all like this uh, total cricket, uh, small cricket package that I presented today. That's it, dear cricket fans, subscribers and friends for Cricket Happenings. This is Ram bidding adieu. And uh, I'll be back with a full match report tomorrow on all this uh, matches which would, be, which would be being played. That's it dear cricket fans for Cricket Happenings. This is Ram uh, bidding goodbye. Thank you.